You know what else is suspect? What? All the Jewish lasers starting the fires out here in California. Yeah, that, they were a problem. Have you heard about that? They're, they're it's a problem. legit problem out here, guys. They're actually lasers. Exactly, they're lasers. <laughs> and when they shoot, they say to blame, which means to burn in Yiddish. <laughs> If you don't get that reference, I'm sorry. Sorry, about, sorry for your life. <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. You need some Corbin. I'm not Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Instagram. Twitter, Twitter. more juicy content. It's Thanks so to Patreon, follow us on Twitter, account, link and guess what? Follow us on personal YouTube channel. Link in the description below. If you know the, f if they know obviously what film we're reviewing, they should know why I said I'm not Rick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm you do me, because you can't click on the link without seeing yeah, the title. Yeah, seeing the title, what'd you think? You don't know what you're watching when you're watching what you know? Uh, but yes, welcome back, Classic Month. Uh, one that we've wanted to watch really since we saw that first song, I believe, yep. right? Which is the end of the film. Yeah, much. <laughs> I didn't know that. It is essentially now it makes the end sense. of the film. Yeah. Uh, but we are reviewing the 1950s, I think the oldest film we've ever seen. It was the year I turned 21. I was able to start drinking. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Piazza, which I believe means thirsty, I think. No, actually. Thirst? It's, there's a twist on the title. The original title with like one letter differentiation, mm -hmm. I believe it was originally thirst, and then they changed the title to actually mean wistful. Interesting. I was re and I could have gotten it reversed, so you may be, you may be right. It's either thirst or wistful. Uh, but a, it's a... Uh, 1957 Hindi film mm -hmm. uh, directed and produced and starring Guru Dutt. Yep. Uh, and also uh, Wahida Remen and and Mala Sina and and Remen and and, and Johnny Walker Red. Uh, Johnny Walker, who I do believe he's he's a legendary comedian. He's the guy that did the the, the comic the, the masseuse, the yeah. masseuse guy. But he was also, I believe, in that Shah Rukh Khan casino scene. He was one of the guys behind Shah Rukh Khan, I believe. Oh, I believe I could be oh. wrong, but he's like okay. a, he's like a legendary comic, essentially. Cool. Uh, in Hindi cinema, so yeah, nineteen fifty-seven. It's obviously a spoiler review. Spoiler review, guys. <laughs> you haven't seen it? It's on Amazon, uh, which was great. Yeah, was... Am if you got Amazon Prime, just watch it. You don't have to rent uh, it or anything. So, Rick, your initial. Uh, 1957 thoughts. My 1957 thoughts in the form of a paragraph, which also might fall under the category of a less than 60 second review. Oh. A beautifully shot film whose primary star is the direction, lighting, and story itself. Piazza is a really beautiful to behold, especially the lighting, but it's also a struggle to endure, especially the acting that doesn't like other classic films so much as celebrate a style in the art form as it distracts us from what is otherwise a powerful story as relevant today as ever. It should also be noted that it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that Bengalis wouldn't appreciate the poetry of a man who writes his poetry solely in Hindi. What? <laughs> it takes place in Calcutta. Oh. And he's trying to become famous as a poet in Calcutta, but gotcha. his poetry is in Hindi. I was gonna say, I was like, yeah. I like the poetry. I did too, the poetry's beautiful. <laughs> However, if he'd been writing his poetry in Bengali, I think everyone in Calcutta would have appreciated it a little yeah. bit more. It's a joke, everybody. Uh, I'm being silly. But did you enjoy the film? I enjoyed the film. It, it was a bit laborious in terms of the sense of... Part of what made it laborious, I don't know if it was so much the runtime as it was the... Um, I typically don't have a problem with melodramatic acting, the way that you have had issues with it. This one, for me, made it hard to continue to stay engaged in a very serious story. Uh, that was my only real critique of the film, was the melodramatic acting, with pretty much everybody in the cast. Guru? He was the least. <laughs> he was actually pretty... He was the least. He was pretty James Dean-esque in terms of no, his, his, his smallness for this time. I'm confused how, how you have issues with this and not with the film we just watched. <laughs> because it was a different... No. Yeah. It, this was three years before. It, it's, it's different. Anyways. They're different. <laughs> But yes, I did. It was just I, different for me. I, there, there, were, the, there were some acting guests that I, I totally agree with you that it was, it was um, for the time, it's just what, what they were doing. Which I typically doesn't bother me, but this made, for me, um, the, it, it made it, it didn't so much feel like a celebration of a particular, here's the difference. I saw in the last film that we watched, the Bengali one, I saw more of a, uh, celebration of the acting that comes out of stage in Bengal to the screen versus 
this was old uh, silent film era into the sound era cliche, the kinds of stuff where people do things that are, are that for me, for a three hour film telling a serious story like this was made the runtime feel longer. It's two and a half, not three. It felt like three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but the lighting is possibly the most beautiful lighting in a black and white film I've seen. Mm. The lighting and the direction, the editing choices, uh, were there were just some moments that were so beautiful with the, which was interesting because I remember when we saw the, the musical number, my thought was how shadowy things were. Mm -hmm. And it felt more like Orson Welles. Yeah. This didn't feel like anybody. This felt like his own vision of, and, and how everything was, it seemed just meticulously laid out yeah. in terms of the direction and the, the, the writing. Yeah. I mean, the, the lighting. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a, I actually really like Gurudot uh, in this. But you uh, compared him to James Dean. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the act, Tour, I'm saying his style, especially for the time, especially in Indian cinema. Okay, to be that granted to be that granted real and yeah. believable. Uh, yeah, that's very different from everything else I've seen really at the time. Um, so that's that's I, I did I really enjoyed it. There are some of the supporting. Yeah, I can absolutely totally agree with you in terms of the melodrama. It's just uh, you're gonna get it with every film that you get exactly. In this time. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> And it's not, I'm really not trying to harp on that in any way. I'm just saying that one thing, if it hadn't been so heavy for me, I think I would have been just raving up and mm -hmm. down about the film and it would have not felt like I was having to endure it and keep watching it because I was forcing myself to versus watching it because I was enjoying everything I'm seeing. Oh no, I, I think I enjoyed this film much more than you did. Probably. Because um, I actually, the songs I thought were phenomenal. Songs were pretty. Uh, the lyrics of each of the songs was absolutely Gorgeous. It was poetry. It's interesting. Yeah, it's obviously, and the writing. It was written by a poet. The songs were. They were all, especially some of the moments. Like one of the first moments when he's singing his poetry and people are actually hearing it. I too got the sense of absorption in what was being said. Those were probably my my favorite moments of the film are the songs with the poetry, and then the last act, the last twenty five thirty minutes mm. from the train scene to the conclusion and the message of the film. Yeah. I, that, that for me is by far the strongest thing yeah. about the film. It was, it was a great message. Uh, great, but you could remake that film today oh, yeah. and it would be relevant and powerful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could essentially put a bunch of people in that who they die and then they become infinitely famous. Like you yeah, could, it, so shot, you could put that whole scenario in In fact, this. I'd actually love to see this as a contemporary remake because mm. it does bespeak the, uh, and this is my favorite thing about it, aside from watching the, the brilliance of the direction, is this story and this reality that's been going on. This has been going on since the dark ages of how um, artists are not respected and people are only looking how to make money and profit off of other people. And then I loved in the ending where he's like, you know what, uh, I'm not gonna participate mm -hmm. in any of this. Do you guys not recognize the reason that this did well? That was after I was dead. Like, why am I going to jump on this bandwagon of commercialism? You guys are completely missing the point of art itself. Mm -hmm. That that for me is the bit I'd love to see this remake. Yeah, obviously that song that we reacted to was even more powerful. Obviously, because it's you get the whole feel of it, and there was lots of symbolism, just like we saw when we reacted to it. Did you like the ending? Um, I think I would have actually preferred like them like beat them to death. That's or, or but maybe I, I, not I, didn't, to, like, I didn't mind it. It was very okay. classic Hollywood. Yeah, like I loved uh, it. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casablanca. I ending. loved that they were together. I was hoping they would be together, but I was also hoping for something. And the reason I'm asking is because I read something about the original ending. Mm. The original ending, Dutt wanted him to end alone. Mm. He wanted he wanted VJ. I would like that to 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 not be with the the prostitute. Yeah, and say I, I'm not participating in any of this. I'm gonna live my life alone and go die. Mm -hmm. It was the distributors and the people in the producing aspect of it who said, please don't do that. The audience is gonna to wanna to see him and the, what's her name? Uh, the, the, uh, it's Gulgal? G. Gulgal, right? Gulabo. Gulabo. Yeah, Gulabo. Uh, we're, they're gonna to wanna to see them, which is true. They were right. I, I did wanna see them together. Yeah. 
Uh, but I find it interesting that his initial intent was very much like the artist itself. It was, I'm not looking for the commercial success of the end of the story. Yeah. I just want it to end in a way that most poetry is, which is tragic. Tragic. Yeah. Very tragic. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't mind it at all. It was, it was a good ending. It was, if you've ever seen the end of Casablanca, anytime any old black and white film is walking off into the sunset, yeah, that's I, except, I'm, I'm, I'm often saying like, hey, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, except there's some films, spoiler alert, see the Western Shane. Uh, there's there's some that don't wrap things up in a nice tidy bow. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I really did enjoy. I, I even enjoyed, um, even though he was he was very over the top, Johnny Walker's character. Even I'm like sure, I was sure you were gonna hate that. I no, I did at times. I liked his songs. Okay, <laughs> like I I enjoyed every single one of the songs in this film. I did too. I thought it was, they were all That's, great. That Obviously, was my most. And he was a very animated, over the top. And yeah. I, so those times, yeah, I do. But like, I really enjoyed his little the the oily song. I did when I like did it was too. clearly somebody else's singing voice, but they went back. Yeah, to I know. Voice. <laughs> it was great. I thought it was hilarious. That was hilarious. Uh, and so yeah, I I really I liked that. Um, I thought it was a great story of, even though we've seen it before, but for this time, if like obviously you'd seen it at the time, the story of a prostitute being the the good person, yeah, the courtesan and, being the one, yeah, and and the one that he loved that sold her, her love away to be somebody like a rich person and have this class and stuff like that yeah obviously at that time you hadn't seen it a lot but we have seen it a lot now right um so i can't really dock it for that because it, it did it yeah one of the first times it was like it was very early on and for very much of i mean if you look at the history of artists especially actors and poets society has for the most part relegated them into the echelons of the outcasts, Even which it's like the world's oldest profession. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and and for most of history, the 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 world of the, the prostitute has been the main outcast of society, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not a coincidence. And I love any story that takes the people, and we've seen it a lot. We just saw it in Parched, the 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 courtesan or the prostitute who actually has a heart of gold, yeah, and is the one who sees the good in other people. Prize, um, prize, the people. Yeah, and I, I <laughs> love not only that she loved him and his poetry, but the idea, the whole corruption aspect for her, and she's a prostitute, the whole corruption aspect for her when she brings the poems to the publisher, and he's like, okay, how much do you want for these? And she's like, I thought I'd have to pay you to publish these. Yeah. The whole concept of making money off of the art form for her was just totally foreign. Yeah. Uh, that's my, the two things that make me, there's only, the only thing I disliked about it was how the melodramatic acting for me uh, kind of made the film, didn't kind of, it made the film drag for me. Other than that, it's, I'm glad we watched it. I recommend it. I think it's absolutely worthy of the, the accolades it's received. Most especially, I, I can't say enough about his, his direction and his use of lighting. Mm -hmm. It's funny because most often in black and white you appreciate people's uses of shadow. Mm -hmm. Hitchcock, Orson Welles, those are my two favorite who've used the medium. I haven't seen anybody use black and white where I was so impressed with the way they used light. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did it, he did it really, did a really great, well. Great and job. Like, obviously they, you had some technical issues with cuts and like transitions to other times yeah. but we had that in and i think every classic we've had our, uh, currently uh, that we've watched yeah we've kind of had that issue it's just they didn't have the editing software i mean technology they also just didn't it wasn't that was the yeah. filmmaking i but, also love one of the shots that isn't a lighting thing but one of my favorite shots that sticks out in my mind for this whole film is toward the end when he's about to leave and the wind is blowing mm -hmm. and in the room all of the papers are just blowing pell-mell all around the place and it really did bespeak in that visual this ultimate culmination of everything of his life's work just being scattered to the wind and vanity mm -hmm. in his mind and yeah. i thought it was a great physical representation of where bj was in that everything that he had created all of his work in the same way that early on everyone treated it literally like garbage. Yeah. It was literally garbage. And she's standing there watching him walk away in that sense of, I mean, how many times, we experience this all the time, do you see a work of art that you wish the world would appreciate and no one else is appreciating it, but, but they're jumping up and down and they're counting the box office. Mm -hmm. That's, 
that's why this movie is so good. Also, another scene that I really enjoyed was the the big dream number scene. Like it was a big, massive you know what number. It me of? You know what I wrote in my notes. We were watching that, and I thought, I wonder, were they thinking about this in Three Idiots when they did not that uh, the zooby dooby 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 ba da ba da reminded me of that. I'm betting this film inspired a ton of other um, fil bo uh, films. Yeah, for generations. But that was a really cool. Yeah, they, it really was very cool different. Very different feel. Yeah, I agree. Which, uh, I don't know if it was one of the producers' idea as well. It, it, I, I saw it I'm like, oh, this is three idiots right here. Yeah, but it was it was big. It was mad. Those are some like right when you see it. It's one of my favorite things about old Bollywood, old Hollywood, or whatever industry. It's not believable the sets they're on, but no. they're absolutely they're gorgeous, gorgeous and they're fun to look at. Yep. and it just has this classic feel to it that just kind of makes you feel like um, there's a bunch of obviously old Hollywood, a ton films, of MGM ones uh, that just. The, the big sets, it yeah. doesn't look like real you at all. You know you're looking at a Skype background and you know that there's elephant doors on either side of the sound stage, but mm -hmm. it, it's got its own uh, unique beauty about it. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was super fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing more Guru Dutt in acting oh, and sure. directing. Uh, so I don't know how many he did each. Like, I don't know if he did more acting, more yeah, directing. I don't know either. Did he only act in his films i don't know no, well i originally there was someone else he had intended for the role oh, really? uh, who he couldn't have do it i forgot who it was but it was a big name probably a kapoor um <laughs> maybe <laughs> there was somebody he that he wanted to have do it and then he he did it i think from the insistence of everyone else involved with the production and distribution and mm -hmm. producing um and uh, i i anything else that he's i want to I'm most especially impressed with his mastery of black and white mm -hmm. and being a director who I've not seen, again, use lighting in a way that, I, that if I knew, first thing I would think about when we're going to watch a film is, oh, I can't wait to see what he does with lighting in this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Well, very worthy, absolutely a worthy So watch. next, let us know which of his films, which was the next classic we should watch uh, down below. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.